Have you heard about adding eggshells to your garden? What came first, the eggshell or the nutrient? We've all heard about adding eggshells to our garden. Today in Soil Lab, we're gonna start looking at the nutrient release of eggshells added to your garden. In today's episode of Does It Work? We're gonna be looking at the addition of eggshells into your raised bed or garden. So to get ready for this, we ate a bunch of breakfast. We had a bunch of eggs. We cleaned and washed those eggs, dried them, and then ground them up finely. So what we've ended up with are a somewhat powdered eggshell that's again dry. We chose to wash, rinse, and then dry and grind these eggshells so they'd act like a soil amendment. So in today's study, we're going to be having a typical garden soil as an untreated control, so no additions to this one whatsoever. We're gonna have our treated control where we add about 3% by volume of eggshells, and we will add those and incorporate them and then water them in. Initially, this is gonna look like a lot of eggshell, but once incorporated and watered in, it won't seem like an overwhelming amount. So we got a roughly even distribution of our eggshells there, and we're gonna go ahead and even that out um, just with our garden tool here. So we have a nice even distribution of those eggshells in our typical garden soil now. So let's go ahead and get these watered in. Adding this water and keeping this moist throughout the study is gonna functionally activate the microbiology in the soil. So those microorganisms, the bacteria and the fungi that are breaking these eggshells down and releasing that nutrient. Now, you may have heard that an eggshell can persist in the soil environment for years, and that absolutely is the case. However, slowly through time, those nutrients should be liberated and the microorganisms are largely gonna be responsible for that. So we're trying to make the optimal environment for those microbes. Our soil temperatures are gonna be in the mid to upper 60s, maybe the low 70s, and we're gonna keep the soil moist so that they are not limited by water. All right, the data's in. So what we're gonna do first is look at the chart for some general trends, then we'll dive into the data. So as we're looking at our sample comparison, we're comparing an untreated control to our eggshells, which you will recall we ground up. We added those to the soil, and this is what we found after a period of time. The main changes that we saw in nutrient availability using the MySoil Ion Exchange Resin Test is that we saw a pretty good increase in calcium. And we would expect that with these dried and crushed eggs. The other main difference we saw that I thought was interesting and was in contrast to what we saw with the coffee grounds, if you were following along, is we actually saw a decrease in iron. Now, why would we see a decrease in iron even though we've added an amendment to the soil? Well, it's likely tied to the increase in pH that we saw. So you can see here as a trend that increase in pH. Now, we would expect that because eggshells naturally have a relatively high pH in that 7.8 range. So the key takeaways in the trends is that we saw an overall increase in calcium, a slight decrease in available iron, um, likely due to that increase that we saw in the pH. Now let's go ahead and put some numbers to that. So here we are looking at our data sets. We have that untreated soil on the left and we've got our eggshell plus soils on the right. Like we said, we wanted to look at calcium, iron, and pH. Since pH is at the top, let's go ahead and take a peek at that. You can see in our untreated soil, we're at about 6.7. That's almost an optimal pH. As we added the eggshells, you see that our pH trended just a little bit high and actually increased to 7.24 and that's in the short term. So we did see that increase in pH just above the uh, optimal range. As we go down and we look at our calcium numbers, you can see in our untreated control, we were sitting at, oh, at about 265 parts per million calcium. We've added our eggshells and that's increased the available calcium. Our available calcium was increased over 100 parts per million. We were up almost to 400 parts per million just by adding those eggshells. So again, increase in calcium, increase in pH, and then we see our iron decreased pretty substantially. Um, I understand that's only from 2.4 to 1.5, but that's you know nearly in half when we really think about it. So we did see that drop in iron, likely due to that increase in pH. As pH increases, iron availability decreases. So do eggshells work? They absolutely do. They increase calcium, they can increase pH, but one thing we wanna be sure to be conscious of is that it could, due to that increase in pH, reduce the availability of some of our micronutrients. 
So of course we looked at the benefits just from a nutritional or available nutrient standpoint, thinking about this being used as a fertilizer at or near seeding. But we need to think also of those non-nutritional benefits of the addition of eggshells. So these eggshells, especially when they're finely ground, can be a great source for your worms if you're in a vermicomposting situation as they use the, the eggshells that are ground up in their gizzards to help grind up other foodstuffs or other organic materials. Eggshells also through time should weather, break down, and what we would call mineralize some other trace elements. If given a significantly longer period of time, call it months or years, we'd likely see those differences. But this is what we're seeing at the short term if you were to incorporate eggshells into your soil with that pH uh, about 6.7. So what's a situation where we want to use these eggshells or where they'd be very appropriate? Let's say we have a relatively low calcium, perhaps organic soil, and we're going to be growing tomatoes. We're concerned about that blossom end rot. These finely ground eggshells added to your garden might increase your calcium levels and minimize that chance for blossom end rot, giving you the most nutrient dense tomatoes that you can grow. Thanks for following along on this Does It Work Soil Amendment series. We hope you're enjoying the data as much as we are. If you are enjoying this, or if you'd like to learn more, please like, subscribe, more importantly, leave a comment below, and we'll see you in the lab.